despite what my son says, I'm not a super expert on controllers, and I'm not a super expert on uh, all of this other bits and pieces, so I thought I'd um, dumb it down a bit <laughs> and uh, just talk about something a little bit different. And one of the things that I've found over the years is that I've really been looking at ways to house those bits and pieces of electronics gear that I use out in the yard. So if you're using pixels, a lot of this probably won't apply to you, but I was using originally a Renard controller and I would locate my DC SSRs out in the yard, basically attached to the, uh, the prop out in the yard. And that was all connected up by a Cat5 cable. So what I needed to do was really look at a few different ways of creating some housings for those sorts of things. What I'll talk about very briefly is the, uh, the whole concept of IP ratings. Um, we've already mentioned it in a few of the presentations, particularly about the pixels, that just because the Chinese claim their IP68, don't believe them, they never are. Um, talk about a few of the different uh, containers and also show a few examples of uh, some bits and pieces that I've made as well um, over the years. Okay, I'm going to start off with a disclaimer. Um, number one, this is Adelaide. I live in Adelaide. It doesn't rain here. So for those people who live in Brisbane where it's constantly underwater, you probably don't want to look at it hardly any of this because a lot of the stuff, waterproofing is an issue. So again, you know, we might get one or two rainy days a year in, in December while your show's running. Um, and touch wood, it's not that heavy. So waterproofing, while it's important, is, you know, not like one of the forums I was reading, somebody was complaining because their yard was two feet under snow. We don't have that problem, thankfully. Um, the other thing, again, is use really that sort of risk-based approach. Don't go housing a $200 or a controller in one of these. You're asking for trouble. It's not going to work. Well, it might work, but not for long. So, you know, but on the flip side, it's pointless having a, a $200 plastic waterproof steel box to house a $5 DC SSR or something like that. So use that um, sort of common sense approach, if you like. And if in doubt, go overboard with your waterproofing. Um, everybody's had those issues, I'm sure, where water's got into something and, uh, and has corrupted it. IP codes, for those who may or may not know, um, IP codes is an international system of rating for uh, ingress protection, I think it stands for, actually. There's two numbers. The first number relates to, um, uh, I suppose, physical access. Um, I won't say dust. Dust is part of it. Um, but it goes right up to sort of access more than 50 mils, so, you know, sticking your fist in there and that sort of thing, right down to sealed against dust. The second number is the waterproof rating, um, starting from completely open to the atmosphere down to number eight, which I think is what a submarine is rated at, um, basically underwater for length of period. Um, that's just a little bit of a, uh, an example as to um, what the IP ratings are. IP68, there are a few subcategories that I didn't bother with, but IP68 is normally what uh, is considered relatively waterproof. Um, you will see all of your pixels advertised that way, but again, I challenge anybody to uh, show me a Chinese pixel that will work for a long period, one metre underwater. Um, I've never seen one. <laughs> um, I'm not sure, I, I, I haven't worked this out in my mind, I don't know whether it's true, um, but I cannot see how you could get something that was rated, say, 48. So particles and solids greater than one mil could get in, yet it could be immersed underwater. So again, I don't know how that works. It doesn't work in my mind. So I think some of the codes there you have to uh, be mindful of. Um, again, just a quirk of the, uh, the system that they use. <laughs> Absolutely. 
All right, so with that sort of, with those IP codes in mind, uh, we'll move on to some of the ways that I've used um, either in the past or currently to uh, house some of the bits and pieces that I use out in my yard. Um, one of the, the handy ones, these little takeaway food containers. Um, you can buy them a pack of six or seven for uh, you know, a couple of dollars at Coles. Very, very, this is obviously not a new one. Um, <laughs> did eat the takeaway. Um, again, handy in an emergency. Would I use one of these? No, I have um, in an emergency when it's been, oh crap, I'd better put something. And, and, and for a bit of background, most of my stuff lives on my balcony. So it's all out of the weather or out of the direct weather. Just that one day, occasionally, the wind's at the wrong angle, uh, the wind's really strong, and you get a bit of water blows in. So then I'm madly, oh my god, what am I going to do? One of these, duct taped over a controller, yes it works, it keeps that spray off. IP rating, probably about 21, but it works for what it needs to do. Uh, would I permanently house a, uh, a controller in one? Nope, definitely not, but for an emergency, not too bad. Um, some of the other little gimmicks, this one much better uh, waterproof rating. <laughs> I can get my fingers in it. <laughs> there we go. Um, the actual box itself, um, great for um, power boards. So I actually do use these in my yard with power boards in them. Um, very handy, very quick. You just cut a, uh, a hole in the side for the cords, whack the lid on, and they are relatively waterproof. Keep your power boards up, off the ground, out of the way, and stop ants getting in them. I, I find that a lot of ants, they love making holes, uh, their little houses in uh, electrical equipment for some unknown reason. I'm sure it's warm or cosy or something like that. So yeah, so those boxes, um, not too bad. Tupperware containers, um, nobody likes Tupperware containers, they're always annoying in the, uh, the cupboard, they've never got lids etc. Repurpose them for your electronic stuff, not too bad, this isn't Tupperware, I can't afford Tupperware. Um, <laughs> but uh, re repurpose them, um, you know this little lunchbox thing, a couple of dollars and again just for a, a controller, something like that, just to keep it out of the weather, not a problem at all. Um, a lot of benefits of this stuff, you know, they are cheap, um, easy to come by, easy to get, a whole variety of sizes so they fit all sorts of different things. But again, be mindful of that waterproof aspect. If they're relatively protected, like my gear is, these things quick, cheap and easy. If it's going to be out in the weather, use one of these more complex boxes that, uh, you know, the, the guys obviously use. Jiffy boxes, another sort of handy thing. Again, whole variety of sizes, relatively cheap. You know, three, four dollars at um, JCAR Astronics. Cheaper if you can find something on eBay. Um, always handy to use. Um, and again, what the the benefits of this, like I say, you know, you've put a new element out in the yard. You go, oh crap, I need to waterproof this. It started raining or or whatever. Handy. Go down to Coles, grab one straight away. Um, Jiffy boxes, again, already talked about them very briefly. Running out of room up here. Uh, stay there. A um, whole lot of different sizes, probably a little more waterproof. You can certainly put a bead of silicon, or what I also do is um, duct tape around the join to uh, help keep the water out of there. A little easier to mount electronic boxes in, particularly if you design and build your own um, components, then you can design it to specifically fit in a Jiffy box. Um, and again, with a, uh, you know, where the cables and that come out, a bit of silicon or a grommet there will keep it relatively waterproof. I use quite a few of those around the, uh, the yard and they're, they're really handy. Um, okay. PVC pipe is one of the things that I use a, um, or, or have started using a little bit of. Going back quite a while, I, uh, I made these little um, spotlight thingos up. I just pass these around um, just so you can sort of see. This is a uh, 3 watt LED um, 
white spotlight that I use. Um, I've got about 10 or 20 of these things that I pop up. Uh, they just run straight on a, uh, a 12 volt controller. And again, quite a, uh, a waterproof little gadget. Bit of electrical conduit, 25 mil conduit, fits that just perfect. They just slide in there beautifully. Um, bit of perspex on the end and I'll show you how I cut that off. And then that's actually a chair tip. I couldn't find or, or couldn't get hold of um, the proper little electrical caps at the time, so I just got some chair tips. Total cost of that, about 25 cents um, to house a little thing in, you know, really dirt cheap. I hand that around if people want to, uh, want to have a look. The other, um, if you uh, look at some of your other fittings that are available, you know, if you've got big controllers, you've got your large 90 mil stormwater, you know, PVC pipe goes into God knows climbing the stuff. Um, Really handy again, you know, end caps, these are waterproof or as waterproof as you make them. If you glue that on there properly and get a proper seal, it is completely watertight. Um, you know, this sort of thing here with your, um, your screw fitting again, basically watertight. Your only issue is waterproofing the wires that are going in and out of this box. Um, but of course, you know, if you're hanging it vertically like that with your wires coming out, it's going to be relatively waterproof and um, certainly keep the ants and uh, any other little creepy crawlies out as well. Um, and again, your PVC's a whole range of different sizes. Um, this is 50 mil stuff, that's what I used to, uh, to create these. These are a 3 watt RGB uh, spotlight that I built, um, again, out of a whole heap of uh, off-the-shelf PVC fittings. Um, they use both electrical and um, uh, SWV, which is a type of uh, uh, sewer waste and vent pipe. It's a plumbing pipe. Um, and again, fairly, uh, fairly simple to put together, fairly waterproof. Again, with my situation, this is out of the direct weather, so I can have my connectors on the back. Um, but if you were to uh, have it in the weather, you really want some cables in here, uh, some waterproofing and, uh, and everything like that. So I'll pass this one around. Feel free to uh, pull it apart, have a look at it. I've also got, um, so I'll start that on its way. That's all the guts hanging out there. Um, that's the, uh, I, I gave a talk, I think last year, maybe the year before, on the, um, the DCSSR board that I converted to um, accept um, Pixel WS2812, I think, Pixel signals. So all I do with these, and I can't get this apart, there's a little Perspex thing o in there. This is simply a, um, these are, I think I put a price on there. These little, um, that's a reducing bush from Bunnings, fits over the end of the pipe, and there's a tiny little lip in there. Um, it actually holds the, uh, little Perspex window in there quite well. Um, what I then do, using a piece of 20 mil conduit, I make up a couple of little spacer rings like that so that the, uh, the LED doesn't press directly on the little window, otherwise it melts it, or can melt it. And then a bigger one here to sort of hold it all in place. So that, that's how all of that goes together. And then all it is is the length of the uh, the 50 mil pipe with the uh, the end cap on the end. So all pretty straightforward. How do you cut those little perspex discs? Um, the way I do it is this is a um, a hole saw. I bought a kit from Bunnings, 9.95 or something like that. It's pretty cheap. Normally with a hole saw you have a drill bit coming out of here. So normally it drills a hole in the centre centers it and stops it wobbling. Take the drill bit out, now you have to use it in a drill press. If you try and use it in a handheld electric drill, you're going to end up with blood swearing and tears because it's just going to rip your hands apart. You will never get it centered, it will never work. Well, I say never, but you know, challenge anyone to try and not end up swearing. So, take the center out, <laughs> hold it in a drill press, Piece of perspex again, just scrap off cuts like that that I use, drill away, and if you get the right size, 
um, you can actually end up with something that is very, very close to the size of your, uh, your electrical conduit. Um, and then I just either super glue it on, or if I have any um, of the, uh, the proper PVC pipe glue, I'll use that, but few and far between. So super glue seems to work really well. Um, I don't know how well acetone would work. It'll certainly glue this. I don't know whether it will glue to the PVC pipe, but super glue works. $2 shop, you get five or six things for two bucks, works great. So, so that's how I make the discs. And again, you know, you can see there I've got a big one. I made a little one here for, oops, for something or other that I was doing, a little cover. So, um, so that was that one there. Um, yeah, so that's just a few ideas on, uh, on some bits and pieces that I do. Um, these sort of threaded adapters are really handy. Um, again, you can see how I've used it in that, uh, that, that spotlight there. I was toying with the idea of using a, a 90 mil one and sort of having multiple ones of these on there for, you know, red and green and blue, but then I just wussed out and just bought an RGB lead and thought, <laughs> oh, I'd be done with it. Um, but again, you know, these can, you know, go on the flat, go on there, you know, whatever. Um, you can put your cable glands in to uh, secure your cables and all of that sort of thing as well. One of the things um, that is important and can certainly help with your um, protection of your boards is to actually use standoffs. And, and by that, what, it, what we're talking about here is a, um, a spacer that goes underneath the board to keep it up. So if you've got a board sitting directly on the flat of the plastic here, um, any moisture that gets in there gets in between the board and the plastic, causes short circuits, and it doesn't dry very easily. So by using a small standoff, um, it keeps airflow under there, uh, helps certainly with, uh, with heat distribution, also keeps some millipedes. I I've, must admit, I've had a couple of millipedes crawl into these things, and they go toasty really quick and, and fry the bottom of your, your boards. So um, yeah, the standoffs are, uh, are quite a good idea. A couple of things that I use uh, if I do do standoffs, you can buy them, um, but again, quite often, um, what's it called? Your four mil irrigation tube stuff, the little black poly pipe, just cut it to whatever length you like, just cut it with a knife, and uh, then you've got a standoff, put your bolt through if you're you know, mounting something sort of permanently and you've got a, uh, a good, very cheap standoff that you can make to, uh, to length. Um, you can buy the rigid risers as well, they're called, for your little rigid, for your little sprinklers to go on. Uh, they're good because they're already straight. Um, and again, the trickiest part is trying to cut them all to the same length. But, um, but yeah, where you can, uh, ideally use a, uh, a standoff um, for those reasons. So, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely, and plastic may be conductive as well, um, so it's not always as good an insulator as one might think. So by standing it off, yeah, you keep those signals, uh, signals intact and um, keep the moisture out and all of that sort of thing, for sure. Um, Possibly you do get half an inch of water in it, if you stand up it's three quarters of an inch, it still works. Exactly, yeah, yep, and I, um, yeah, I have had that situation where something that I thought was waterproof wasn't, everybody's done it I'm sure, um, and then when you open it up and you find, oh, that wasn't as good as I thought. Um, the other thing is the cables as they come out of your boxes actually go down, mm. not up. Yeah, and if they must go up, what do you bend in them? So they come down, up, and then that causes a little dripping point on the bottom of the U so that any water drips off there rather than forces its way inside the gland, um, you know, or through your, your silicon or whatever you've used. So by all means, do that. Okay, all right. Well, thank you, everybody.